Now it's time to hear the other side of the story. Robert Ellen is the CEO of Live by Live and was in the news recently as the defendant in a lawsuit with Austin McBroom. Let's hear what he has to say about the event. Immaturity, potential fraud, selfishness, and bad business practices are all part of the story. If everyone wasn't lying and everyone just accepted the truth, which is it was an awfully, incredibly successful event. 136,000 tickets. Right, you know, is, is a big number. I'm going to begin with this clip because it is the catalyst that set in motion for all of the drama that has happened since. In pro sports, when a team is winning, they'll overlook the demanding superstar. They will cover up a teammate, maybe doing some things on weekends he shouldn't be doing. They'll even excuse people from practice if they need the day off. But when they start losing, every problem becomes a ticking time bomb. I think the same thing happened here. Once the revenue was finalized and people weren't getting paid, all of the characters in this story began diving deeper into Austin's contracts and promises and found out that he may not have been so truthful after all. Lawsuits are the natural recourse. If the pay-per-view number was larger, no one would have known Austin's real behavior. Austin was so arrogant and so egotistical about this that he refused to put it on cable and satellite. This is the ultimate you know, stupid pill in life, which is 98% of every ticket in pay-per-view in the history of pay-per-view that has been sold was sold over cable and satellite. Is there a worse personality combination than arrogant and inexperienced? I'm shocked Robert didn't get Austin to sign over any and all responsibility for the event. Robert has 30 years experience and Austin has zero running live events and Austin thought he knew best. This is like when a Karen goes into a store and tells the employees how to do their jobs. The second thing he decided was that he wasn't gonna do any paid marketing. Well, we had agreed to spend millions and millions of dollars in paid marketing, whether it's McGregor, whether it's Mayweather, whether it's Muhammad Ali. You spend money on television, radio, so on. And he just he decided and determined that he wasn't going to do any of that. If you track this story, a common theme is Austin acting like an influencer and not a savvy business executive. Shame on us for thinking anything differently. My opinion, my guess, is that Austin doesn't have nearly as much money as he wants his brand to appear to have. I've been broke many times before, and his decision making is very in line with some someone who's running on tight margins. When you don't have money, you generally think conservatively with business spending. No expenses means higher profit margins, right? If he had money like he wants you to believe because you know he put out a course on how to become a social media millionaire, I think he would have spent a lot of money on marketing knowing the potential upside. So he really didn't bring in any investors. Oh, he may okay. have thought he was going to. He was very cavalier in that deck. Uh, we told him that. Uh, we told him that, you know, these are going to, it's going to take an awful lot to hit those. But it didn't matter. He didn't have to hit anywhere near those numbers, right? Robert and Austin were business partners for this event, but they both abide by two totally different sets of principles and ethics. Robert's company, Live by Live, is a public company and he has a fiduciary duty to his shareholders. If he does shady business, he has real repercussions and potential hardships. Austin, on the other hand, commits fraud, most likely broke many business laws, and certainly broke ethical laws, as you'll see in a second. He doesn't have shareholders to address. He can still put out content on YouTube. A majority of his audience probably doesn't care about his behavior. And to this point, he hasn't faced any financial damages. You're not gonna necessarily convert free people, free on YouTube and free on, on TikTok, mm -hmm. and convert them into buyers. That's a really hard trick. I imagine this is the same challenge OnlyFans creators have. Give away free content on this platform, then try to get them to pay for content on that platform. At least with adult content, the talent gets paid after they get screwed. With Austin's event, the talent just got screwed. Well, you have to ruffle feathers in order yeah. to drive these kind of audiences. Austin didn't really understand that. We taught him, we educated him, we even got him, we even got him to have a brawl with Bryce, right, at Fred Siegel's. You know how good that was, right? <laughs> I could tell you that. That was like pulling teeth. I thought they were going to have a brawl going back yeah. when I put them on two boats in Florida. If there's ever a show starring social media influencers in a spinoff of The Ultimate Fighter, Robert needs to be the mastermind. Instead of fighting in a cage, they're fighting on boats or for the love interest of Addison Ray. And the loser has to become as irrelevant as Phase K is hopefully about to be. Sure. The same thing, the same thing when he questioned Hard Rock. Imagine questioning Hard Rock. They gave us $2 million up front. This is the first time I've ever seen this in the history of pay-per-view. When Austin came to us, he was paying the MGM $750,000. That's a $2.7 million swing. He now claims we never told him about it, but he actually sent this messaging, messaging, amazing. This is, this is truly amazing, things like that, right? And then he now denies he even knew it, but not that he denied that, but he questions Hard Rock on how many tickets they sold. Do you think Hard Rock's gonna lie to you? 
Think of how much of a disaster this event would have been if the event was held at MGM and not Hard Rock. That would be $2.7 million less in the pot to go towards expenses and the fighters than there already is, which is still not enough. Everything Robert says in this video includes some action taken by Austin that was shady, involved manipulation, or downright lying. Remember, Robert is held to different standards due to his position as CEO of a publicly traded company. Because social gloves is a very serious asset. 136,000, right, times 50, times $50, right? Yeah. You share that up, you get close to $10 million in revenues. There's yeah. very few first time events in history that have done that. But what he really has, he had an opportunity to build the league and to build a social experience, right? My guess is this event generated somewhere around 12 to $13 million of revenue, $6.8 million from pay-per-view, $2 million from Hard Rock, one to two million from stadium tickets, and another one to two million from merchandise and sponsorships. That's an impressive number if you don't count all of the promises made by Austin to the fighters. You get $5 million, you get $5 million, you get $2 million. The only one that's gonna put up hard money was Austin James Hardy. And the reason we put up money is Austin was supposed to pay for the entire production, told us the monies were wired, then changed the number, then guaranteed the monies were wired and never paid the full amount. My interpretation with Austin after following this event is he's a guy who has significantly less money than you'd think. He's tied up in a lot of lawsuits. His cash is sitting in his lawyer's country club memberships, and he has just enough to keep up the facade. This is not the behavior of someone with money and integrity. As you'll see in the next section about his promises, Austin isn't really a man of his word. There is a rumor and there is some paperwork that shows that Austin has a first position that he is an MFN with himself. What's that mean? An MFN means he's most favored nation. That could even become in front of all the fighters. Multiple of them have a wow. first position. He could be in front of all of them. So if the money goes to him, it may be gone. This is the center of the problem. The money is being held in Live by Live's accounts. Austin wants the money in his account. More on this in a second. No, the remaining money is held at Live by Live. Okay. And the, and the reason it's held at Live by Live is that James Hardy, Bryce Hall, Taylor all demanded that the money doesn't go to social gloves. Everyone else is like, please do not give the money to Austin. That money is as good as gone if it leaves your hands. It shows you the level of respect and trust they have in Austin. What we really have is a public company holding the funds because the money isn't enough to cover the signed contracts. Live by Live wants to hold the money because they know the money being held in a bank account isn't lost, it just needs clear direction on where to go. Austin wants the money because he may have first position over everyone else due to, in my eyes, committing fraud and signing contracts in dubious ways. He's contractually obligated to $5 million, I believe, even though he basically signed that contract himself. If there's only a few million dollars in the account, he's taking it all and everyone is out everything. I don't see how he's, he's you know, how, what dream he was facing, but I can tell you that, you know, all of those people in that first position, want to make sure that the remaining money, which is nowhere near what Austin thinks it is, but it's a real number, right? Millions of dollars sure. is protected. Austin basically signed a bunch of contracts promising the fighters would get paid a certain amount. Because the revenue generated wasn't nearly enough to cover all of the expenses and fighter pay, the characters in this story are stuck in limbo waiting for Austin to relinquish his control of the contracts and to settle with everyone. This isn't happening because Austin is trying to save face publicly and shift blame onto Robert. He's got to decide what he wants to do with it, right? I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get the money that's left paid out to the right person. So what I ask for, I've asked Austin now. We've asked 50 times. We've asked through his lawyers. We've lost family. What is the waterfall? Tell us what the waterfall is. Give us who gets the money first and back it up with the agreements and everything would really be released. The waterfall Robert is referring to is the final payout schedule for the fighters. Austin signed everyone to exorbitant contracts and those contracts cannot be fulfilled by Live by Live and Social Gloves. Think about it like this, the fight generates $10 million. After paying out contracts to employees that work the event and third party companies, the musical artists who probably got paid up front and other various expenses, there's let's say $4 million left. And it's gotta to come to the table with everybody, right? So everybody can walk away with, it's not gonna be perfect. There's no any of the money that he committed. Well, Austin signed contracts saying this fighter would get $5 million, this fighter would get $2 million, and so on. At some point, Austin is going to need to accept that the event made significantly less money than he anticipated, and they need to restructure the contracts. Everybody knows the numbers. Everyone knows how much money is left. They just don't know what the waterfall is because Austin got all the fighters to sign an NDA, then signed many of them to a first position. 
And when you sign to a first position, you legally cannot sign a second person to a first position, right? Uh, is it fraud? Is it breach of contract? Is it worse, right? Those are all question marks. This is where Austin's behavior starts to cross over the line into borderline fraud. For those not aware, first position basically means they are paid first revenues. It's the safest debt or equity position since you'll be paid first. The problem here is that Austin coerced people into signing to fight at this event by telling them they had first position. If three fighters, the main investor, and Austin all have first position, who's getting paid first? And based on the most favored nation clause that might have been signed by Austin, he may have signed a contract with his company, aka basically with himself, that paid him the first first $5 million from the event. It's very tricky, but unless you file bankruptcy, James Harding is in the first position. Gotcha. And the man deserved, and the man deserves his money. He wrote hard checks. The only one that put up hard money was us and James Harding. It's pretty unfortunate that Austin isn't allowing the two people who funded the event to make sure they're paid first. I think Austin has realized that there isn't enough money for him to get paid his $5 million and is now throwing a temper tantrum trying to get his way. Again, this is not the behavior of someone with money. He could make sure everyone gets paid something and walks away with an L, but at least people get paid and the lawsuits die down. Instead, he's risking losing everything. Here's why. If the lawsuits are correct and you committed fraud, yeah. I there's whole different rules on fraud and bankruptcy. That's oh, one. Okay. Num number two is, again, what I'm told, and I don't know this is a fact, that James Harding's contract has a first position, but it also has a personal guarantee. If he's got a personal guarantee, he's either taking his house if he owns it. It sounds like from the papers he may not own it. The banks may own it, right? Yeah. But if he does, maybe he's taking his Rolls Royce and his Lamborghini and all the fancy cars and so on. This is the path that could lead to destruction for Austin. The personal guarantee for James Harden could be the reason why Austin isn't handing over all of the contracts. My interpretation is that Austin knows there isn't enough money to pay everyone's share. And he certainly knows if he hands over the contracts and participates, then he's not getting paid too. At this point, Austin would be an idiot to take any money, but his behavior hasn't exactly been someone making sound decisions. If it's true that James Harden has a personal guarantee for the $2 million, then Austin better pay up quickly, or else he's gonna find the facade of the successful millionaire McBroom family crumbling down. It's a shame, and you know, he's gonna learn a hard lesson. If this goes, if it goes the distance, right, he's either gonna end up bankrupting the company, and from what I'm told, the James Harding money, he has a personal guarantee. If he bankrupts the company, he's gonna be paying him personally or, he, or he's filing personal bankruptcy now. Austin is in position to go scorched earth and ruin everyone. What Robert is implying by going the distance is if Austin carries these lawsuits all the way to court, which will involve hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees, all of the money could be depleted. Other than the lawyer's bank accounts, no one wins with Austin going the current path he's on. He's going to spend so much money on legal fees that he'll bankrupt the company he's associated with so that he won't have to pay the fighters. Everyone loses. And if there's a personal guarantee to James Harden, then Austin is going to have to come out of pocket to pay up. I don't think he has those kinds of funds liquid. In order to pay up, he might have to sell his cars and house. He has a lot of representation. He's got bankruptcy lawyers. He's got two law firms, prior Cashman's, a top law firm in the country. He's got another law, small lawyer that's represented him in a nice size firm. You know, they all have DNO insurance. They have, they all got real risk in this, right? If I was them, I, I'd want this ended as soon as possible. I want everyone to come, come to a solution, right? Come together and say, listen, take the L, right? And go back to the win. Austin is behaving like a teenager who didn't get his way and is pouting to the principal about someone eating his food. He's going to ruin this entire event for everyone because he's not going to make his $5 million like he had hoped. Based on Austin's past behavior, he comes across as a guy who goes from one grift to the next, narrowly escaping any responsibility. He moves on, his fans still tune in, and everyone forgets. But not this time. I think he's going to be confronted with some real tea soon, and it's going to be costly to some resolution with everyone, including he should have given equity to him, give him a piece of social clubs. The IP would be worth real money, right? If he kept all these kids engaged, these kids have massive social media followers. After listening to Robert talk, he fully believes that Social Gloves had the potential to become a massive business. Austin screwing this up is not only hurting him today, but foregoing the opportunity to turn the company into a massive win down the road. To tell you is what I told Austin is, not only would we help to end this, we would have if he had behaved, right? This was after all the nonsense, right? It's all the complaints he had, you know, the whole works. We would have potentially invested more money into social gloves. 
I had never thought of this before the scandal and lawsuits, but the IP for the event was worth something. And most importantly, Social Gloves could have become a live event company far greater than one boxing match. Robert clearly sees it as he was willing to invest more money, taking a financial loss for this event because he knew the value of what was created long term. I think Austin just wanted a quick payday and to beat the Paul Brothers numbers for a boxing event. And I do believe he would have probably been able to pay part or most of this if he didn't block um, paper, if he didn't block cable and satellite. And he definitely would have been able to, if he didn't fight my entire team. Dermot went to his house days before and sat with him and said, you must do this, right? The paid marketing is working. And he shut it off. When Austin inevitably comes out with an entrepreneurship course, I would recommend staying away. He ignored the advice from people with 30 years experience, he screwed everyone over, he's publicly blaming everyone for lying about cold hard data, and now he's spending everyone's money on lawyers. He's willing to spend money now on an auditing firm and lawyers, but wasn't interested in spending money on marketing before the fight. I think everyone involved should be doing an audit on where the money is coming from, because Austin has a history of spending money he doesn't have. You gotta come clean, and you gotta resolve it. And he can't come with an ego. And he can't come with arrogance. The arrogance is over. It's getting really ugly. And again, I don't know the personal stuff, right? It's pretty ugly, right? The press is pretty mean, right? If you continue to build a hole for yourself, they get meaner. When you start hitting the Wall Street Journal, right, you're really taking reputational risk that you may never be able to get out of this. I feel bad for everyone involved, even though I've been told by a source that they all knew to get money up front or to stay away from Austin. I would hope that Austin's days of these scandals are over. The only way I see that happening is both he and Catherine losing a judgment from their lawsuits and having to pay up. Once the facade is gone, the social media success is probably over. Austin's behavior reeks of someone who finally got caught in a scam with repercussions. He's behaving like an entitled influencer who just got told that he didn't drive sales and hosted an event much smaller than Logan and Jake Paul. My guess is he'll eventually come to his senses and settle with the fighters long after hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent on legal fees. This is a situation where everyone involved is losing and it's all at the feet of Austin. And I think Austin's biggest problem is he's not surrounded by the right people. People. Austin needs some new counsel around him because he's about to ruin his entire reputation if it isn't ruined already. Everything I've seen shows Austin as the central point of failure with everyone getting paid. Until he accepts that he's not going to get paid and that he committed questionable business acts, he's going to burn through money faster than a heroin junkie after winning the lottery. I think we'll see a couple more lawsuits before the courts take over. I don't see this ending well for Austin at all. It's about to get really expensive and I don't think he has the money to handle these decisions. I hope he changes course, decides to come clean with the contracts and decides a new payout structure for everyone involved. Until then, I'm tuning in because I find this story fascinating and hope you do as well. Thanks for watching.